Hello friends and welcome to another Thought Spark video. In this episode we're taking a look at the Cassini spacecraft. It spent nearly 20 years in space, launching in October of 1997 and crashing into Saturn on September 15th, 2017. Of the 20 years it spent in space, 13 years of which were spent studying Saturn and its moons. Cassini was powered by three radioisotope thermoelectric generators which provided the spacecraft with 600 watts of power, which is about the equivalent of half a hair dryer. To move Cassini into and out of other orbits and position itself relative to Earth, Cassini used four thrusters with hydrazine used as its propellant. At the time of Cassini's grand finale, fuel levels reached around 1%, plus or minus 2%, so they had very little fuel left at all. But let's say for this video, NASA had miscalculated the spacecraft's orbital position during its grand finale, and Cassini missed colliding with Saturn. For this scenario, provided its antenna remained pointed at Earth, NASA could continue to communicate with the Cassini spacecraft for quite some time, as its radioisotope generators were at relatively healthy standing at the time of its final descent into Saturn. However, any attempts to move the spacecraft with what level of fuel it had would need not be used until the opportune moment in its orbit. But for this video, we're going with the fact that Cassini has no hydrazine fuel left in its thrusters at all. So given the time NASA had anticipated loss of signal from Cassini, the signal strength instead remained strong and data kept rolling in. Upon confirming no impact and no propellant, NASA can do nothing to move the spacecraft. Using Universe Sandbox 2, I simulated this collision miss scenario, and this showed that Cassini would make another two similar orbits from its grand finale, each taking almost a week, about 6.45 days. After these two orbits, Cassini's orbit would become more and more elliptical, as this is likely from Titan's gravity as Cassini is flung to the other side in its orbit away from Saturn. During the simulation, the spacecraft did not collide with any of Saturn's moons, luckily. At this point, now over a month after the grand finale, there are a few things that could happen, all of which NASA and the Cassini team at JPL wouldn't have any control over. Number one, as seen here from Titan in Universe Sandbox 2, Cassini's orbit becomes so ellipsoidal that it gets flung out so far away from Saturn that it is simply ejected from the Saturnian system. This among other options would likely be the best and most plausible scenario as it would just propel the spacecraft out into interstellar space eventually, like the Voyagers. Number 2. Cassini's orbit takes it to one of Saturn's smaller asteroid-like moons and Cassini collides with this smaller moon and any remaining fragments orbit this little moon, or the fragments fly all the way back into Saturn, becoming a part of the planet or its ring system. Number three, we wait possibly tens of thousands of years for Cassini's orbit to finally decay, where it would finally become a part of the planet it studied. After all, Cassini had witnessed possible environments where life could theoretically live on Saturn's moons, Titan and Enceladus. So it was vital to deorbit Cassini into Saturn to prevent the possibility of contaminating these moons from any surviving microbes from Earth left on Cassini. There's another possibility we can look at, which we looked at in a previous video of retrieving Voyager 1. We could do the same thing here with Cassini. Though this approach would take likely billions of dollars and at least seven years for the spacecraft to get to Cassini in the Saturnian system and either deorbit it or retrieve the Cassini spacecraft. I thought this video would be a little interesting look at the theoretical possibility that NASA had miscalculated its orbital position and during Cassini's grand finale it actually missed crashing into Saturn. I hope you enjoyed this Thought Spark video that took a look at the Cassini mission. And I particularly encourage you to check out Universe Sandbox 2. You can simulate this kind of scenario, use other kinds of spacecraft, including Cassini and Voyager 1, though you just have to get the game. I won't spoil any more for you. This has been another Thought Spark video. I hope you had enjoyed it and it got you thinking a little bit. Please share this video with someone who may enjoy this kind of content. 
And until next time, thank you for watching, my dear friends.